safe and sound. Safe and sound? Joe, you drive too fast. Well, I'm just trying to bring a little excitement into your life, I think. Taking care of your pond brothers made you too serious. Do you think breaking my neck driving with you will cure that? No, but I think I can think of another cure for you. I wonder where Dad and Jimmy are. Dad and Jimmy? Carolyn, don't, don't you have any romance in your soul? They really should have been back by now. Yeah, well, I... don't worry about them. You know, it takes a little time to look at a thousand acres of land. You should have gone up, too. Jimmy went with them. Well, Jimmy's a good son, and I'm no good. I'm kind of shiftless and irresponsible. I think you know what I mean. Are you looking for somebody, stranger? Yeah, a man called Partridge. You know him? Lem Partridge is my father. Is he here? Oh, you got some business with him? Yeah, kinda. Him and me's old friends. He's not here now. He's up in the hills surveying a piece of land with Mr. Cartwright. You can wait for him. Yeah, well, I'll catch up with him later. You just tell your daddy an old friend from Tucson dropped by. Tell him Jack Grote said... said hello. <laughs> What's the matter? Tell me what's the matter. The man outside, you knew him, didn't you? No, no, I didn't know him. My father did. Who is he? Jack Grote from Tucson. It's my mother. My father said once of it hadn't been for Jack Grote, my mother would be alive today. Hi, honey. Well, for a young couple supposed to be enjoying themselves, you're both looking mighty serious. Oh, that's really fine land up there, little Joe. This time tomorrow, your father and I are going to own it. How about stand for supper? Try some of Carolyn's cooking. Dad, there was a man looking for you. Oh, what man? Jack Grote from Tucson. Jack Grote. Dad, isn't that the man that... Yes, that was the man. He said he'd be around for a while and he'd see you. I guess I always expected he wouldn't. Dad, what are you going to do? Do? What's it to do? We've got to do something. Don't worry about it, son. I'll handle it. Mr. Partridge, I... I know it's none of my business, but... Is it true what Carolyn said, that this... this man Grote was responsible for the death of your wife? Yes, little Joe, it's true. Happened about ten years ago in Tucson. One sunny, peaceful day. Their mother had... Going out shopping, trying to find a bowl of cloth to make a dress for Carolyn. There were two men, both ugly drunks, started shooting up the street, trying to kill one another. When she came out of that shop, one of their bullets hit her. A dozen men standing by, just watching. When I got there, she was dead. And one of these two men was Grote. I was sheriff of Tucson at the time and was sworn to uphold the law. So the only thing I could do was to send them both to prison, which I did. But I made a sad mistake that day. I should have killed them in the street like a pair of mad dogs. Instead, I arrested them and gave them a fair trial. I tried to convince myself that I had done the right thing. But that's mighty small comfort when you're burying your wife. Well, Dad, what are you going to do now? I guess I'll just have to wait to see what he means to do, son. Now, stop worrying. I've handled plenty of men like Jack Grote. Let's have some supper, honey. You'll stay, won't you, Joseph? Well, no, thank you, Mr. Partridge. I wish I could, but I'd I better be getting back to the ranch. 
Well, you tell your father I'll meet him at 9 o'clock in the morning at the land office, all right? Yes, sir. Good day, Carolyn. Jimmy? Uh, Carolyn. Same story some time ago. What do you think this fellow Grote intends to do? Do? You now, when you've been sitting in jail for that long a time, stewing inside and building up a poison against the man who put you there, you might do anything. You'd think it would be Partridge. You'd have all the hatred. Uh, well, I guess when when his wife was killed, Lem well, kind of sickened on his job. You know, he never even taught his boy how to handle a gun. Seems all the things he's been running from these years are about to catch up with him, don't it? Paul, why don't you go to the sheriff? Well, Lem Partridge is a grown man. I'm having a meeting with Lem and Wade Cowley about that land deal in the morning. I might try to persuade him to go see Roy. Oh, you right in with me? Sure, Paul. How long is it going to be, Paul? Oh, just as long as it takes for Lem and me to haggle with Wade Cowley over the price and then sign our names. You load up the buckboard and, uh, oh, don't forget, make sure that that side meat is... I good. know, I know, the side meat's nice and lean. <laughs> All right. I'll meet you back at the store as soon as we're finished. Right. Now, Wade. Oh, Ben. Jimmy. Where's your father? Carolyn and I talked him into going to see Sheriff Coffee. Good, good. Oh, Wayne, I uh, hope you haven't changed your mind about selling that land. I'm no rancher, Ben. I'm far more comfortable operating out of an office here in town. There are days when I wouldn't mind changing places with you. I see you got the deed already. Hey, you didn't put the price down, did you? We still got some dealing to do, you know. Well, I'm just waiting for Lem Partridge. Well, you'll sell your land, don't you worry now. Well, I'm not worried, Ben. I... Oh, here he is now. Uh... <laughs> You looking for someone, mister? Well, I was told I'd find a man named Len Partridge. My name's Partridge. Well, you ain't Partridge I'm looking for, Sonny. You want my father. Oh, yeah, well, I guess old Lem would have a boy about your age now. I guess he would. Who are you, mister? What do you want? Oh, I just want to say hello to an old friend from Tucson. You're Jack Grote. Sure does make a man feel at home to have folks know his name. What do you want with my father? Easy, Jimmy, easy. Ben, be careful. Yeah, be careful. This ain't none of your business. This is strictly between me and Partridge. The boy asked what you wanted. Yeah, he did, didn't he? His daddy should have taught him better manners. You shouldn't be so nosy, boy. He's gonna kill him. He swore he would, because Dad sent him to prison. I've been waiting ten long years in Yuma prison for this day. And when Lem Partridge walks through that door, I'm going to put a bullet right in the middle of his belly. And there ain't none of you that's going to raise even a little finger to stop me. Not even you, boy. Suppose you just ease that gun out real slow. Uh-uh. Over there on the table. Now look, Grote, all this happened such a long time ago. Why bring it up now? Don't forget, last time you were lucky. You got away with a few years in prison. This time it'll be the rope. So why don't you just ride quietly out of town and forget the whole thing? Last time was an accident. This time I know what I'm going to do. This is going to be a fair fight. He's going to draw, then I'm going to draw. Then I'm going to walk right out of here. 
Then I guess there isn't going to be any fight. Partridge hasn't worn a gun in ten years. Partridge knows I'm in town. He'll be carrying a gun. He's unarmed. You shoot an unarmed man, you won't get 50 yards from that door. If I know Partridge, and I do, he'll be armed. Over there. You too. What'd he do? Kill Jimmy Partridge. I should have killed him. Take him to the sheriff's office. I gotta tell them. Sheriff, I think I'm gonna be very comfortable here. It's better than I'm used to. Yeah, it's a real nice little jail. Inside. Lem Partridge, did I? But I got his boy. Now don't let Partridge suffer like I done for ten years in Yuma. You're gonna hang, mister. Oh, I don't think so. No, that boy went for a gun. That makes a fair fight out of it, and I got two witnesses to prove it. You got a couple of witnesses that heard you say you was out to get Lem Partridge, too, Buster. Big boy, they don't hang a man in this territory for what he meant to do. Got a real dandy there, Roy. See. That boy never touched a gun in his whole life. I never let him. You all knew that. Lem, well, there was nothing we could do. Nothing you could do. I tried to stop him. What was that for? The man's son is dead. I know that. Is he trying to call us cowards? No. It wasn't anything like that. I guess what he was saying was that if one of us had taken the risk of trying to stop Groat, we'd have stood a better chance. Sure, a chance to get our heads blown off. I don't want to be a dead hero. Where's he going? I don't know, Paul. Just turned and walked away. Howdy, Lamb. I'm... All right, Roy, where is he? Lamb, this is foolish. You're just asking for trouble. Open it up. Why don't you... I said open it up. All right. Hurry it up. This is the way you fight, huh? When you're the only one who's got the gun? I should have killed you ten years ago. Well, I'm not gonna repeat that mistake this time. Hold it, Len. Let go. Len. Haven't you done enough already? Kill him like this, you'll be no better than he is. Now, come on, let go. Go on home, ma'am. Let go. And him? If you stand trial, you know that. I tried, Partridge. I'll stand trial, you know that. Ma'am! 
me a chance, Ben. A chance, that's all I ask. A fair fight. Now, we can't do that. Lem, you're forgetting you was a sheriff once. Now go on home and settle down. You just stood there and let my boy die, and now you're protecting him. If it was one of your own sons, Ben, you'd have done something. But you didn't. You're guilty. Both you and Wade, just the same as if you'd pulled that trigger. Old Lem didn't mean what he was saying. As soon as he simmers down, give him his gun back, huh? Come on, Paul, let's go home. Paul. Good boy. Never did any harm. Eighteen years old. Boy, he never even had a chance. Respects. A little late for respects, isn't it? Dad. Hey, you're a big man around here, Ben Cartwright. But from now on to me, you're a small man. Small man. Who stood by and let my son die. It's not Mr. Cartwright's fault that Jimmy's dead. A man that stands by and lets evil happen. He's as guilty as the one who does the evil. You can't salve your conscience shedding tears at this boy's grave, Ben. Because you're not wanted here. Lem, I'm your friend. Not anymore. You stop being my friend when you let my boy go for that gun. for quite a long time. He was like an uncle to Jimmy. Yeah, but he's acting like it was it was his fault that the boy got killed. I don't get it. Well, he's upset about what Mr. Partridge said. He must know he wasn't responsible. Well, not for what he did. He's thinking about what he might have done. Yeah. Looks like it something we could do or say or something. Maybe there is. Maybe we can prove that he couldn't have stopped him. We've been talking, and uh, I got an idea. Evan, talking isn't going to help anything. Now, don't you realize there wasn't anything you could do about it? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't think I'll ever know. Well, there's a way to find out. What do you mean? I think I know how to take the doubt out of your mind. Well, it may seem a little strange to you, Mr. Cowley, but uh, we want to go over what happened yesterday. We'd like to go through it the way it actually happened. Well, I mean... With empty guns, of course. Where were you standing, huh? 
Over there by the corner of the desk. Joe, get over there. And where was your gun? That table, just on the side of it. Joe? Where were you, Mr. Cowley? Well, I was over there by Ben. What's the sense of all this? Well, you'll, you'll understand in just a minute. Now, where was Jimmy? He's sitting in that chair. And, uh, Groat? Groat was right here by the window. Look, Adam, I don't, I don't like this. Oh, it's the only way now. Uh, what actually happened now? Well, Groat stepped up to the window where you are, had his gun in his hand, and... And, uh, he just moved over to the window because he heard someone coming. I guess he thought it was Lem. And he began to pull down that shade. That's what happened. Jimmy went for my gun. All right, let's see what happens. You see, Pa, you wouldn't have made it. Well, maybe Groot wouldn't have been as quick as you. And you wouldn't have been as quick as me, Pa. I don't know. I'll never know for sure. I didn't go for that gun before Jimmy. Pa, that's not the point. We just showed you if you went for the gun first, you would have been killed. You didn't have a chance. You don't understand. You weren't in my shoes. Well, what more proof do you need? Thank you. Joe, look, you... You're going back home. Something I've got to do. Right, wait. Is your father here, Carolyn? No, he isn't. Oh, where is he? I don't know, Mr. Cartwright. I, I don't know. What's the matter, Carolyn? It's my father. I've never seen him like this before, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> Come on now, pull yourself together. Now, tell me what's wrong. After the funeral yesterday, my father rode away and he didn't come back until dark. He wouldn't eat any supper. He sent me to bed, but I could hear him pacing all night long. All night? Yes. I dozed off and on, but I could still hear him. Early this morning, I couldn't stand it anymore, so... I walked into the room and found him cleaning a rifle. Oh, I'm sorry to be such a baby. Oh, Carolyn, you've had a terrible few days. Did your father say anything to you? No, he didn't. He just... When I saw him with a gun, I, I just rushed over and tried to take it from him. He pushed me away and... Mr. Cartwright, that's the first time my father's ever touched me in anger. Oh, dear. You know, men sometimes say things or do things in anger which they really don't mean. Well, he didn't even look like my father. He just glared at me and turned and left the house. I heard him ride away on his horse. When was this? Oh, this was... A couple of hours ago. I, I'd better be going now. Mr. Cartwright, please, tell me something. I, I don't understand. When, when my mother died, my father put up his guns. Now when my brother dies, he puts them back on. Oh, Carolyn, sometimes when, a, when grief piles up on a man, his thinking gets blurred. In spite of himself. But why does he have to kill Groat? Oh, no one's going to kill Groat. Groat's in jail. Now, Sheriff Coffey and I, your father's friends, so don't worry about anything. Oh, thank you. Have you eaten today? You better fix yourself something. Roy, the 
man left his place with a loaded rifle, in his frame of mind, is capable of doing anything. That's right. You reckon he's coming here? Well, I don't know where else he'd go. There's the man he wants. But you ain't gonna let him take me, are you, Mr. Cartwright? No, sir. Because you know your duty as a citizen, don't you, Mr. Cartwright? And you too, Sheriff. You can't let that man come in here and kill an unarmed prisoner, now, can you? Hmm? Oh, look at that big man. Yes, sir, ain't he a big man with a gun hanging from his belt? But you wasn't so big yesterday, was you, Mr. Cartwright? <laughs> Better find the Partridge Roy. Try to talk some sense into him. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. You can't take off and leave me alone here. He'll kill me. He's right, Ben. We can't go off and leave him alone. My deputy's taking a prisoner down to Carson. You mind spelling me off while I have a look around and see if I can find Lem? All right. If you do find him, go easy on him, will you? Yeah. Oh, it sure does give a man a good feeling to know he's being guarded by the chief witness for the defense. Well, let me tell you something, Grote. When I testify at the trial, it'll be against you, not for you. Well, you've got to tell the truth, don't you? I mean, a big, upstanding citizen like you ain't gonna lie. How is he? You'll hang, Grote. One way or another, you'll hang. What do you mean? Put up that rifle, then. You step aside, Cartwright, because I'd just as soon kill you, too. Look, Lem, I can't let you do this. All right. You got a gun? Try and stop me. Now I'm going to count. And when I get the three, you better be out of the way or go for your gun. One. Don't be a fool, Lem. Two. Use your head. for keeps. You better shoot for keeps. Ah. He tried to kill us. He tried to kill both of us. Benny, you all right? Flesh wound. Man, he meant to kill you. He could have killed me, and he didn't. Even though he thinks you and I are guilty? Maybe we are guilty. How could we be guilty? Guilty of what? Guilty of what we did yesterday or didn't do in the land office. It's only human. Are you saying we're guilty of being human? Ben, you all right? Yeah, I'll live. Where's Lamb? Well, he got away. This is pretty serious. You know, it's one thing to want revenge on the man that killed your own son. But it's another to go around with a gun just shooting at people. What are you going to do? I'm going out and get a posse together and send them out to look for him. I don't reckon to be home after this. Roy. Lamb Partridge is an old friend of mine. Don't hurt him. Let me go look for him, will you? Ben, you just do whatever you want, but I got a job to do. Now, he's wounded one man and tried to kill another one. I got to bring him in just any way I can.
Carolyn, has your father been here? No, Mr. Cartwright. Oh. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Want me to whip up a batch of eggs? It's way past supper time. No, I'm not hungry. I still say we ought to be out looking for Pa. No, we've been all through that. It's not going to do any good for all of us to go running around the landscape. Pa wants us. He'll come for us here at the ranch. Well, it's just not like Pa to go this long without sending word. Well, ain't no use in sitting around worrying about it. We might as well eat. How do you want your eggs? You said I'm not hungry. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm going to look for Pa. Well, now, wait. There's no sense in all of us going out looking for him. Well, I'll stay here just in case. Why don't you check all the ranches west of here and see if anybody's seen him. I'll ride into town and see if I can find him. I don't look so worried. Eat some of your eggs and it'll take your mind off your troubles. Stop that paperwork and put some wood in the stove. I'm freezing. By the time I get this paperwork finished, you're going to be on your way to a place where you're never going to get cold again. Oh, you and Cartwright, if you ain't a pair of big men in a small puddle. Well, you listen, old man. I'm going to have myself a trial, and then I'm going to walk out of here free. You think so? Yes, I think so. That boy was shot to self-defense, and you know it as well as I do. Well, let me just tell you something about this small puddle. The folks that live here are the folks that is going to try you. And every one of them knows that Jimmy Partridge never handled a gun in all his life. And the witnesses are going to say that you threatened to kill Lem Partridge. They say Jimmy went for you, all right, but to protect his paw. And you shot him. In self-defense, in self-defense, you old goat. He dove for the gun. Now, how are you going to convince a jury of that? He never reached the gun, did he? He dove for it. And I got two witnesses, very highly thought of in this small puddle, that are going to testify to that. Uh, you talk too much. All right? All right. Why would the boy try to reach me when he knew I was going to gun him down, huh? Why? Yeah. Because he loved his paw enough to take that chance. And all the people in this small puddle are going to know that, too. More beautiful words from the big man. Well, it don't mean nothing. You just stand back over there and I'll give you a hot grub. Now, look, Sheriff. I told you I was freezing. You're such fine, upstanding people in this town. Is this how you treat your prisoners? You freeze them to death? Oh, all right. Here. Wrap yourself up in that and shut up. I ain't gonna wrap myself up in this thing. It's crawling with bugs. What are you talking about? That blanket was just washed. All right, look, it's crawling. You can't show me a bug on the... <laughs> Thanks for the lecture, big man. Everybody's a big man. <laughs> Kind of a blasted sheriff are you, anyway? How could you do a stupid thing like that? I'm asking you, what kind of a sheriff are you? Well, right now, I'm a pretty sick one, and an infernal talking of yours ain't helping me out one little bit. Oh, my head. Oh, the devil take your head. What about my life? You and your, your papers, and you talk about witnesses. Oh, calm down, will you? I was only doing my job. I just can't understand it. I was sitting in my office, minding my own business. And now, just a day later, a man is all fired up to kill me. Oh, wait. Nobody's going to kill you. Is that so? Well, that's what you think, Ben Cartwright. Do you know what happened? Do you know what our smart sheriff did? Oh, Roy, I, I couldn't find him. Was the posse able? What's wrong? What happened to you? That's what I'm trying to tell you, Ben. This idiot let Grote escape. Oh, no, Roy. He's right, Ben. I'm a stupid idiot. I let that groat maneuver me into a position where he hit me over my head with my own gun. After all the years I've had of handling assorted criminals. Oh, that's not the important thing right now, Roy. Groat's free and Partridge is running around those hills with a rifle. 
There's going to be shooting that could be killing. Well, never mind about them. We've got to think about ourselves now. They're not the only ones who could be killed. Others could be killed, too, like you and me. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what. He knows we would be witnesses against him. Now he'll want to kill us. Oh, nonsense, Wade. Nonsense? Yes, nonsense. Goat's not going to bother with us. Why not? He's a killer. We're the only witnesses. That's exactly the point. He needs us alive. He's after the man who he came to kill in the first place. And that's Lem Partridge. Yeah, that's Lem Partridge. The first place he'd look for him would be Lem's place. Carolyn is there, alone. Yeah, ben, we gotta get out there. Oh, Roy, you're in no condition to go anywhere. You get yourself to a doctor. Wait, you come with me. Walk in between two men are gunning for each other, not me. <sighs> I went in town to look for you. Did the uh, sheriff tell you about Grote? Yeah. He told me you were headed this way. Did you see anybody on the way up? No, no, so. It seems quiet enough around here. Check the barn. Partridge's horses. Yeah. Well, Carolyn seems to be all right. Looks like your fears about growth were a little unnecessary. Who is it? It's me. It's Ben Cartwright, Carolyn. Are you all right, dear? Yeah, yes. What's the matter? Nothing. My father's not here right now, Mr. Cartwright. Wait here. I'm troubling her, big man. And I'll just trouble you to slip that gun out, put it on the table. You too. Smart as a brother, ain't she? And prettier. Grote, you already killed a man's son. How much more blood do you want? Just his. And I'm going to spill some of it as soon as he comes through that door. I might just as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Oh, I might... I might let him crawl a little bit first, so as I can see the look in his eye. Yeah, I think I'll let him beg a little bit. How do you know he'll be back tonight? Mister, I got all the time in the world. Get back in the corner. All the way. Go on. What are you doing here? Drop the rifle. 
Go on, rub it. Oh, I've been waiting for you. I should have figured Coffee's jail wouldn't hold you. There ain't no jail gonna hold me until I settle with you final. Get over by the fireplace. Away from the gun. I don't want this to go too fast. Not after waiting all this time. I want to taste it a little. Come over here, sister. If this ain't the most stubborn family. You know, you're gonna bruise just as easy as your brother, honey. Do as he says, Carolyn. Ain't this interesting? Now, this is really getting interesting, ain't it? Just like yesterday when you walked into the land office, huh? Yeah, just like yesterday. Who are you and what do you know about it? He's my son, I told him. Oh, your father, the big man here. Well, did the big man also tell you how he sat tight? You know, since I've been to this, this lovely little town, it, it's kind of got to me. Yeah, it, it's made me want to be a solid citizen, too, like the big man there. Well, just how big a man does it take to shoot a boy in the back? You don't bother me, Sonny. That was self-defense. Your daddy knows that. If you were there, Pa, would you call it uh, self-defense? Well, I don't know. I always figured that self-defense was facing a man, not a boy's back. Suppose we let old Partridge here have an even chance. Suppose we let him go for a gun, huh? Even chance, huh? Just like he gave the kid. You don't even know what the words mean. You got a big mouth on you, boy, like your pa. You got some ideas of being a big man, too? Well, I don't know. What do you think, pa? You, are we as big as solid citizen there? Well, maybe if the tables were turned, he wouldn't be talking so tough. Well, you try me. Come on, try me! Well, talk is easy, ain't it? Now, you two listen to me. This is the way it's gonna be. You open your mouths again, and this little girl is gonna get it. You filthy, murdering animal. Ten years in a prison will make an animal out of any man. You'd shoot her in the back just like Jimmy, wouldn't you? You know it, Cartwright. You was there. I understand, Ben. I didn't realize how it was yesterday, but I do now. Shut up, Partridge! Make your move! Scrooge, you've already killed his wife and son. It wasn't my bullet that killed his wife! Yeah, I was a little drunk, but it was an accident. And I never would have gone to prison if it hadn't been the sheriff's wife. If she hadn't been the sheriff's wife, you wouldn't be alive today. You got off lucky. Lucky, yes. Ten years lucky? Well, let's just try your luck. <laughs> What are you waiting for? Go on and kill me! Madam, ride into town and get the sheriff. Good man, Lamb. Good man. Say, Ben, I thought that wild young son of yours was supposed to take my daughter riding this afternoon. Yeah, I guess he is. Yeah, morning, Wade. Morning, Ben. Here are the deeds for that land. And at the right price, Lamb. Yeah. Here they are made out right and proper. Thank you. Well, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? 
Man has a lot to be thankful for. A lot to mourn, maybe, but a lot to be thankful for. Not the least of which is a good friend. Thank you, Lem. Take you right out and have a look at your new land. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, Wade. Not at all, Lem. Ben, do you still think we were guilty of anything? Well, as you said, Wade, perhaps of being human. Oh, and Carla, don't keep my son out too late. It's got plenty of hot water. Take an hour soaking in a good hot tub to get all this trail dust off. Yeah, well, don't tell me you're gonna take a bath. I dang sure am. I discovered something, Joe. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. How to lose weight. Yeah, how? I lost eight pounds last month just bathing. <laughs> yeah, well, I can think of another way you can lose some weight. How's that? Let's take that hat off. Oh, big deal. He's unhappy. It's a doggone good thing he ain't downright miserable. He'd tear up the whole ranch. I'm so unhappy, and when I get unhappy, I just like to bust things up. Yeah, we've noticed. We've noticed. We want to know is what you're unhappy about this time. Yeah, Hank, if you just tell us, maybe we can help you. I'm in love. Is that all? I want to get married. Well, it's a little more serious, but I wouldn't exactly say it was fatal. Yeah, Hank, if you feel that serious about it, go ahead and get yourself hitched. Keep your job here. We'll have to make a few different arrangements for sleeping. Well, that might not be a bad idea. We'll get him out of the bunkhouse. Yeah. You fellas don't understand. I get it. You're afraid to ask her. I've asked her all right. Oh, she turned you down. Yeah. Fine, upstanding, young prospect like you. Who's this girl, anyhow? Well, she's not exactly a girl. Huh? Kank, I, I know you love your horse, but this is a little ridiculous. Huh? It's... Abigail Jones. Abigail, Abigail Jones? Jones. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the man said. Well, look, we sure to handle it enough as it is. Who's going to drive the cab? Oh, he ain't figured on quitting his job. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right then. Yeah, but, but it's not. Paul, all you right. don't understand. Uh, what's, the, what's the matter? Oh, Hank's in love. Well, he'll get over that. What's for supper? Uh, he wants to get married. Well, it happens in the best of families. Let's eat, huh? Now, hold on, Adam. Things aren't working out for him. Well, what's the matter? Isn't the girl willing? No, not exactly. You know, the fact is, she's holding out for some fancy court, and that's the trouble. You're right. You know, Hank isn't the most romantic guy in the world. She, she wants to be wooed. She wants fancy talk and all the trimmings. Adam? You're pretty good with the words. Maybe you could help old Hank out, huh? Now, you two leave me out of this. 
Hey, now look at him. You're not taking this serious enough. Hank is unhappy. When he's unhappy, you know how he gets. Well, you got a point there. Who's the girl? Well, ain't ain't exactly a girl. You can say that again. I say it ain't exactly a girl. Fact of the matter is, it's uh, it's Abigail Jones. You're kidding. Well, we know Abigail ain't no raven beauty, but well, Hank says she's refined and educated, and, and she don't scare him like them painted up gals down saloon do. Mm. Yeah, well, she's refined and educated, all right. Yeah, I can remember her history class. Boy, she used to get stuck on those romantic stories. John Smith and Pocahontas, Anthony Cleopatra, Sir Walter Raleigh. Boss, that's it. Huh? Come on, Ross, we gotta find Hank. Do you know what they're up to? I'm afraid I do. I hope I'm wrong. But why do I have to use my best sunny go-to-meeting jacket? Why can't I just use my everyday working jacket? You just don't understand, Joe. Hank, right, come on over here and sit down. We'll go through this whole thing again. Sit down right here. All right, here we go. Now, remember I told you Sir Walter Raleigh was a real nobleman, right? Yeah, right. Now, one day, one day it's raining. It's really raining. There's puddles all over the street. Get the picture? Now, Sir Walter Raleigh takes off his jacket, Hank, his best jacket, takes it right off and covers the mud puddle with his jacket so she can step on it. Yeah, and you, you didn't hear him fussing about wanting to use some old work jacket. Right. If it isn't a good garment, Hank, the whole thing is meaningless. That's right. It's got to be elegant, Hank. I know that's all right for him, but he probably has dozens of jackets. I only have one. Hank, Hank, let's not forget there's only one Abigail. Hank, you want us to help you or not? Sure, but uh, where are you going to find a mud puddle in these parts? It hasn't rained for a month of Sundays. Hank, you just leave the mud puddle finding to me and little Joe. All you have to do is be at that church tomorrow morning, bright and early. That's right. How early? Well, real early. You know, Abigail's always the first to arrive. She sort of sets an example for everybody else. You don't suppose anybody else is going to be around to see this darn fool thing, do you? Not at this hour, Hank. All right. I guess I can make myself go through with it. Good. Hank, you're still sure you want to marry Abigail? Sure, I'm sure. He sure. All right. Uh, I can't wait, Ma. I'm leading the choir today. Just a minute. I want to look at you. Well, if you ain't just as cute as a button. Not ain't, Ma. Aren't. Oh, whatever it is. You shouldn't have any trouble landing a man in that outfit. Is that all you can ever think of, Ma? Me landing a man? Oh, you've turned down three. There ain't... Uh, aren't many more. Dull, unromantic clodhoppers. And we've been all through that before. Don't dawdle too long. Abigail, now that's just what I want to tell you. Miss Jones, this is a pleasant surprise. Oh, little Joe. My, how you've grown. Yes, sir. Uh, can I give you a lift someplace? Oh, no, thank you kindly, Joseph. It's just a short walk to the church. No, no, no. Well, I, I wouldn't think of it in that beautiful dress. Well, you'll have to get all dusty. I do declare. <laughs> Certainly is gratifying to discover that some of the polish I've had to teach you little varmints has really stuck. Oh, it sure has. about does it, Hank. All needs to fill it up with water. Here, you just stand back. I don't want to get that fresh dude outfit all messed up. Is 
anything wrong, Joseph? No, no, no nothing's wrong. I uh, just want to check the bridle, make sure. I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to you, Miss Jones. <laughs> you was worried about not having a mud puddle. Oh, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine, yeah. It certainly is kind of you to go to all this trouble. Uh, I don't want you to think a thing about it. Hey, hey, get your coat. You got your speech memorized, don't you? Yep. You know what to do? Yep. Go on in the church. Oh, there. Hi, horse. Go. Yeah, well, I'll just, uh, I'll hold the horse's head, Miss Jones, while you climb down. Thank you, little Joe. You're welcome. Oh, little Joe, I think we'd better move him up a little. Hold up a minute. Why, Hank Myers, what on earth are you doing here? Well, uh, what I mean is, uh... We well, you see, I didn't want you to get your Danish slippers all spoiled. Huh? Oh. How romantic. It's just like Sir Walter Raleigh. <laughs> ah! Oh, my dress. Hank Myers, I never want to set eyes on you again. My beautiful dress. Oh, no. Oh, my dress. Oh. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I'm sorry, boys. I know it isn't fair to laugh, but every time I think... <laughs> hey, Joe, give me another pancake. Cupid and Cupid Unlimited. Free advice given in all affairs of the heart. Very funny. It ain't funny. <laughs> I said I'm sorry. I think it's a terrible thing to happen to a nice girl like Miss Abigail. <laughs> I hope you apologize to her. Well, we tried to. She wouldn't listen to a word we had to say. I wonder why. Now, what was that? Oh, that's nothing. That's just uh, Hank busting up the bunkhouse again. What? You just keep running laughing. Well, that is no laughing matter. Well, you said it was. Horse. Oh, leave him be, Paul. Dad and gone these. He deserves a little relaxation. At our expense? Well, I don't know how we're going to stop him. Well, I know how we're going to stop him. We'll fire him. That's how we'll stop him. Oh, that wouldn't be right after he's worked for us as long as he has. Well, nobody wants the fire, Hank, but nothing else works. Well, all right, we tried. The two of us tried, right? Right now, we would like to bow to age and experience. Yeah, yeah. By that, I assume me and Adam. Yeah, well, I, I seem to remember when I was a pupil of Miss Abigail's, I used to get into trouble a few times. Oh, a few times, huh? All right, more than a few times. I got into trouble a lot of times. But the point is, Pa was able to go down and speak to Miss Abigail and straighten things out. And, and when Pa wasn't available, Brother Adam here was able to go down and do the same thing, and not without success, I Hey, know. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Miss Abigail's always been sort of gone on you. Mm -hmm. What would you have me do? Marry Miss Abigail so Hank Myers would feel free to forget her? No, not marry her, just propose. What? Yeah, but not for yourself, for Hank. Look, all the, all the woman wants is some romance. Yeah, and Adam, there never was anybody any better at slinging them romantic words around than you. Oh, that's right. Listen, if I so much as mention Hank Meyer's name, after what happened, she just hit me over the head with a branding iron. Yeah, but you, you don't have to mention his name. At least not right away. Yeah, yeah, you just sort of sneak up on it. That's right. Then, then, when, then when you get her in a, in a very romantic mood, bingo, you give her the surprise. Yeah, yeah, you say, you say, Miss Abigail, everything that Hank said, everything that old Hank did, he... He did for love. Mm. He did for love of you, Miss Abigail. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tennyson. But would you mind not teaching me what to say? Oh, good. Then you'll do it. I didn't say that. Pa, would you tell him how ridiculous this whole thing is, huh? Well, Adam, I, uh, I think we ought to try something. After all, it's a purely a matter of self-interest. Well, we'll look at it this way. We have to do something about Hank before he breaks up our whole outfit. You're seriously suggesting? Oh, Adam, I wouldn't suggest anything. The final choice is yours and yours alone. Ma? Ma? What is it, Abigail? 
Gail. Ah, guess what? What? You'll never guess. Never in a million years. In that case, I better get back to the dishes. Oh, no, wait. One of my pupils brought me a note today from guess whom? You're starting that again. Adam Cartwright. Adam Cartwright? He wants to see me tonight, after supper, at the approximate hour of eight, if it suits my convenience. Adam Cartwright. Can you imagine? Oh, Adam Cartwright! Do you realize what a catch he is? Oh, now, ma. Most eligible bachelor in these parts. Handsome, got education, and the Ponderosa. He only said he wanted to see me. Want you to see you? What do you suppose men want to see girls for? He ain't thinking of joining one of your classes. You can bet on that. There you go, jumping to conclusions. There's only one thing I'm jumping at that's getting you married. Now you go right upstairs and get your beauty nap. We ain't letting this one slip through our fingers. Oh, Ma, for heaven's sake. Now let's see. I must make me a fresh batch of cookies, lots of pink lemonade, and oh yeah, I mustn't forget to oil the front porch swing. Oh, Ma, uh, there's just one thing. If we do happen to sit on the front porch... It ain't just happening. It's arranged. Well, however you work it, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't stand with your ear to the crack in the door. It makes me jumpy. Me eavesdropping at the crack of the door? Fine way for a girl to talk to her own ma. Well, I'm sorry, ma. Besides, I always use the keyhole. More lemonade. Uh, no, 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 thank you. I've had uh, three glasses already. Another cookie, perhaps. Oh, oh no, no. If I had another cookie, I, I think I'd bust apart at the seams. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have a wonderful sense of humor, Adam. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, Miss Abigail, as you may have guessed by now, I have a rather special reason for wanting to see you tonight. Oh? As a matter of fact, maybe I, I shouldn't have waited this long. Oh. It's of a rather personal, delicate nature. Oh? You may not be aware of it, but there is someone in this very community who has long worshipped you from afar, so to speak. Oh, Adam. Yes, you see, there are certain people who have a lot of trouble expressing how they feel. And the nearer and dearer a subject is to their heart, the, the more difficult it is for them to, to put it into words. I know exactly what you mean. You do? Exactly. Well, it, it's like sometimes at night when a man is on the wide prairie alone under the stars. And he looks up at the sky and he sees a face. The face of the woman he loves. And he thinks about all the wonderful things that he might have said to her when last they met. Go on. And he looks at this face that glows like a flame in the stillness of the heavens. A star that outshines all the others. And he can't wait to get back and tell her how full his heart is. But when he does see her, his heart is, is too full to speak. Oh, Adam. And by now, I suppose you've guessed who I'm talking about. I haven't the slightest idea. Well, you must realize that it can't be anyone else but Hank Myers. Hank Myers? Hank Myers? Is that you up there, Ma? Yes, dear. I, I just came out to air some bedding. I, I forgot to do it this afternoon. Uh, is Hank Myers down there with you, dear? No, he's not, Ma. Oh, well, I, I thought I heard someone call out his name. You sure did, Ma. Well, uh, I guess I'd better be going in now. I guess she's gone. You were... You were saying about being alone on the prairie, the stars shining like all get out. Oh, it sounded just like poetry, Adam. Thank you. 
It took real feeling. A man has to have real feeling to put it in such beautiful language. You do have real feeling, don't you, Adam? Well, yes. But about Hank Myers? I admire your loyalty to Hank. But I want you to know that I understand you. You don't have to be bashful with me. All right. Hank Myers is a good and reliable man. He's worked for us for five years now. I'm tired of hearing about Hank Myers. Why don't you speak for yourself, Adam? I beg your pardon. You're the same bashful, overgrown boy that used to come down to the schoolhouse to talk to me about little Joe. But you don't have to be bashful anymore. And you don't have to worry about Hank. All's fair in love and war. There's a language of the hearts that only hearts can understand. Yours and mine, Adam. Well, I have to go now. There's nothing to be ashamed of when two people love each other. I've got to get back to the ranch. Something's come up. <laughs> loyalty. Unselfish male loyalty. I love you all the more for it. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Good night. I shall say good night till it be morrow. Abigail? Yes, Ma. Madam Gone? Yes, Ma. What was all that talk about Hank Myers? Oh, shut up, Ma. Abigail! Well... Hey, how much we got with that? What's the matter, Adam? Aren't you hungry this morning? Yeah, these... These hominy grits and... glasses well, sure are good. Fine pair of brothers you are. Well, what do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. You mean... After all your sweet talk, she still turned old Hank down? After all my sweet talk, she proposed to me. She what? And it was your sweet talk that got me into this mess. Now, now look, brother, you, you can't blame us if you're just plain irresistible to women. That's right, Adam. You got too dang much charm for your own good. It's all right. It's all right. But rest assured, I will never listen to you two again. <laughs> well, good morning. Morning, Bo. Morning. What's the matter? Well, Seems like I'm worried about something. I don't know. <laughs> What's the matter, Adam? You not feeling well? No. Seems Adam just discovered that he was irresistible to women. <laughs> He's what? He's irresistible to women. Miss Abigail wants Adam to marry her. <laughs> You're joking. Uh, no. I wish they were. Uh, well, Adam, you know, they say there's nothing as inevitable as death and taxes. Yeah. And under the circumstances, I think I'd like to add one more thing to that. A woman, once she's made up her mind to land a man. And, son, I speak from many years of serious observation. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to make a few serious observations in San Francisco. Oh, son, son <laughs> running away would never solve anything. I, I think you should stay here and face the music. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. Where is he? 
Huh? Where is he? I dirty Hank. poke back. Hank, Hank, wait a minute, Hank. Hank, 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 Cal just rode in from Virginia City, and it's all over town. He wants to marry her himself. Oh, no, 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 Hank. Now, the hey. furthest thing from out of his mind is to want to marry Miss Abigail. That's right. I'd rather die. Oh, so that's the way it is. She's not good enough for you. No, no, hey, Hank. Hank. No, no, I didn't say anything of the kind. Hank. Never mind what you said. It's pretty plain to see that you've been trifling with her affections. Hank. Okay, okay. Oh, you can let me go now. All right. I'll hold myself. Don't you try nothing, you hear? I had you pegged all wrong, Adam Cartwright. In all my years working on this ranch, I've been never so wrong about one man. But let me tell you this. If you cause Abigail any unhappiness, you're going to answer to me. And remember that, Adam Cartwright. Oh, excuse me, Hank. It's all right. I've got an idea. Yeah? Yeah. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Adam, there's a way for you to get out of this. So you go to Abigail, and you say to her, Abigail... Somehow I feel that I've gotten into enough trouble listening to you and your ideas. It's because of you two nitwits that I'm in this pickle in the first place. Look, well, we're only trying to help you, that's all. The only help right. you'll be giving is when you and Horse guard that bunkhouse tonight and make sure he doesn't demolish it completely. Yeah. Figure we better get right on that, too. I guess old Hank's about the unhappiest guy in the whole world right now. Would you care to bet? See y'all. Mine not in there. Sure is peaceful and quiet here tonight. I wonder where Hank did disappear to. I don't know. But it's for sure he ain't in the bunkhouse. Yeah. I just hope he ain't gone off and done something foolish. Foolish? Like what? Like, like Lover's Leap, for instance. What, Hank? No, he's not about to go to Lover's Leap till he makes sure Adam does right by his little Abigail. As a matter of fact, I think Adam's the first one to go to Lover's Leap. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, what is that? Sounds, sounds like somebody dying in the barn. Yeah, come on. That's it. What? The romantic approach we've been looking for. No lady can resist being serenaded. No, Joe, ain't you forgetting something? He sings through his nose. Oh, so what? Maybe, maybe he's got a cold or something. Anyway, we can correct that. Anybody can be taught singing. You reckon? Sure. By golly, we'll get started on it first thing in the morning. Come sit down beside me and hear my sad story. I was shot in the breast and I know I must die. Nah, we, we, we can date him. He's got a long ways to go. As I walk down on the streets of Laredo. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, Hank. Hold it. 
Hank, you, you're still singing through your nose, Hank. I, I've told you a thousand times. I, I, I can't sing any other way. Sure you can, Hank. All you got to do is apply yourself. And first of all, you got you, you got to start singing louder too. A gal likes a feller with a great big he-man I voice. I can't even talk loud. How can I sing louder? Oh, Hank, there ain't nothing to it. All you got to do is just take a great big deep breath and sort of suck in your gut and let her fly. Man! Scared me a little bit, that's all. You know, we want him to serenade the girl, Hoss, not warn her of a coming attack. Well, I, I was just trying to teach old Hank to sing loud, that's all. Yeah, well, you can sing loud, I'll say that for you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I found just what I wanted in Pa's library. There it is, right out of Shakespeare. As you like it, just what the doctor ordered words and music. Yeah, but Joe, what good's that music gonna do? We can't read music, neither can Hank. That's right, I didn't even think of that. Wait a minute. There is one person around here who took singing lessons, who can read music and teach Hank to sing. Adam. 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 I want no truck with him. Now, wait a minute, Hank. Look, you got Adam all wrong. What he did, he did for you. For me? Yeah, Hank, he didn't want for uh, Miss Abigail to fall for him. That gummity feels terrible about it. That's right. Look, look, why you got him feeling guilty like if you just apologize to him for trying to kill him. Apologize? Did that girl steal her? Now, listen, Hank, do you want Abigail or not? You know dang well I do. Ain't I been struggling with his singing? All right, then apologize to Adam and get him to teach you to sing. He can do it too, Hank. Old Adam's pretty soft once you break through that hard head of his. That's right. Now look, you ask him, he won't turn you down. No, 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 never in a thousand years. You'll never get the pear-shaped tones by pushing the air through your nose. It's gotta come from the diaphragm. You take a deep breath and... Ah! Ah! No, 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 Hank, Hank, not through the nose, through the through the facial mask, not the nose, but the mask. Ah! Oh, go on, Adam. That's what I call singing. Adam, you ought to be in Opry, Grand Opry. Well, thank you, but that's not our problem at the moment. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, Hank. Now listen. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maiden singing in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me, oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Now you try it. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a young maiden in the valley below. Oh, never leave me. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, Hank, it's through the nose. It's through the nose. It's no use. I can only sing my own way. I can't go. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a young maiden in the valley below. Hey, I think he's got it. I think he's got it. Now do it again. Do what again? Do, do, do just what you just did. Do it again. You just did it, Hank. Do it. What did I do? You sung like Adam. Do it, Hank. Come on. You sang it just like me, not through your nose. Now do it again with the guitar. It just slipped out. I couldn't do that again. Oh, come on, Hank. Oh, come on, Hank. Come on. <laughs> Just as the sun was rising, I heard a young maiden back in the valley back in the nose. Back in the nose. Back in the nose. Well, there's another one of your bright schemes washed down the gully. I certainly can't sing for him. Why not? Why not what? Why can't you sing it for him? Yeah. The answer is no. A big, fat no. Boss, did you ever think we had a brother like that? Hmm. Outside of being dumb enough to listen to you two fellas, what kind of a fella am I? The kind of fella who had turned down another fella after he'd stolen that fella's girl and he had a chance to do something about it, and this fella wouldn't do a thing about it. That's the kind. Yeah. 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 for that song time. Yeah, well, I still say it won't work. Don't just wait and see, will you? Ma? 
Now, don't be late. You know, I can hardly ever fall asleep till you get home. <laughs> That's why I can't wait till I get your husband. Good night, dear. She's going upstairs. Hank, you be careful with that guitar. I borrowed that from Slick Rutherford. All right, let's go. Okay, come on. And you sit there. Remember, strum and move your mouth the way Adam does. Don't forget, both at the same time. Okay. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maiden singing in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never Smile, leave Hank. me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Remember, remember your vows to marry. Remember, remember your promise to be true. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Gay is the garland and fresh are the roses I culled from my garden to find upon thy brow. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Thus sang the maiden, her sorrows bewailing. Thus sang the pretty maiden in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maiden singing in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Remember, remember your vows to marry. Remember, remember your promise to be true. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use Beautiful. a poor maiden so? Gay is the garland, and fresh are the roses. I culled from my garden to bind upon thy brow. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden so? Thus sang the maiden, her sorrows bewailing. Thus sang the pretty maiden in the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh. Oh, 
how could you use a poor maiden so I am Cartwright. I knew it was you. No one but you could sing with such deep, tender feeling. <laughs> in there. No, I'm just unhappy. Gosh knows what the inside of that bar looks like. Let's go inside and have a look. I need a drink to clear my head. <laughs> oh, no, get him out of here. Wait, 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 wait. You mean hang him? Yeah, he did all this and get him out. Now relax, Charlie. I'll pay for the damage. I don't care what you got. Well, just just don't let him get loose again. He won't. Come on, Hank. Simmer down a little bit. Take him back to the back room and clean him up a little. All right, we won't let him move. Now you stay back there, Bill. Take it easy, Hank. Hank, you just relax. But I'm unhappy. All right, all right. But you got to behave yourself, Hank. I want to sing. I'll get him a drink. <laughs> Whiskey, you? Hey, Marge, you want to do me a favor? Hank's not feeling so good. Why don't you go back there and talk to him? That wild man? <laughs> I wouldn't go near him. Oh, come on, will you, Marge? I'd sooner tangle with a loco stare. Hey, listen, do me a favor, will you, Charlie? My brother Adam comes in here, warn me, will you? Warn you? That's what I said, he warned me. I knew it wouldn't work. I just knew it wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah. I want, you never even let me sing my song. Now, Hank, let's don't have no more talk about singing. Maribel likes my singing. Dad, burn it, Hank. Maribel's a mare. Horses like lots of things that humans don't. Hay, for instance. I want to sing. Hank, don't you think we had enough singing for one night? Hoss, if you don't let me sing, I'm going to break up every dang glass of meat. So, Hank, sit down, sit down, sit down. Now, you let me tell you something. I'll give you my unmitigated personal guarantee. If you break anything in here, I'm going to break you. Now, you sit and rest easy. I'm going to go get a drink. You behave yourself. <laughs> Charlie, give me a drink, will you? God burn it, Joe. We're going to have to do something about that, Hank. Yeah, you know, I, I've been thinking seriously about it. I think we ought to mind our own business. Hoss! Little Joseph! <laughs> Is, is your brother Adam here? Oh, our, our brother Adam? No, 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 he ain't, ma'am. No. Isn't. Oh, yes, ma'am, he isn't. I must find him. We were having a very important discussion when suddenly he took sick. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising. What's going on back there? Oh, no, no, nothing's going on back there, ma'am. You're not telling me the truth. Adam is back there. Oh, no, no ma'am. No, ma no, he, no, he, he, he isn't. He isn't back there, no. You're in my way, little Joe. Oh, ma'am, ma'am, this is, this is no place for a lady like yourself. No, hey, you ever see me juggle jiggers? I, you should see it. Look. I'm a jigger-juggling son Look. of a gun. Remember, remember the vows to your Mary. Remember, remember your promise to be true. Oh, don't deceive me, oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor lad so? I think I liked him better when he was busting the joint up. No, Charlie, no! I like it, I like it. Thus sang the poor lad, his sorrows bewailing. Thus sang the poor lad in the valley below. Oh, it's beautiful. I really can't stand it. Neither can I, ma'am. Oh, don't deceive.
deceive me, oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor lad so? Deceive me, oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor lad so? Hank Myers, I'm taking you home with me right now. Out of my way, you Jezebels. Stand back, daughters of Sodom. They liked it. Liked it? It's the most wonderful thing that ever happened. And to think I wouldn't even talk to him. <laughs> Women are just plain loco. Mm. I'll buy a drink. Kiss the bride? If not, if you don't mind. Hold my hat, will you? Mr. Adam, don't overdo it. Miss Abigail, may I offer my best wishes? I'd like to say I've never seen a prettier bride. Hank, congratulations to you. You say, listen, I've been hearing a lot about your singing. Wouldn't this be a good time to uh, give us a sample of it? Oh, no. I made Hank take a strict vow never to sing to anyone but me again. Second to Maribel. Maribel? That's my mare. And only when you and Maribel are alone. That's our deal, little chickadee. Only when we're alone. Adam, I hope you've learned something through all this. I hope I learned something. Yeah. Anytime you find a little gal you want to marry up with, call on me and little Joe to help you out. Ha!